Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour. I'm here with Kareem Mays, my co-host, Francis Richardson, Dan Sissick, Sharon Cortisano, Brigetta Talley, and somebody else. I don't know who else is here. Leon, I think. Leon Alexander, are you here? Yes. Okay. Tonight, we're talking about sales uh, sales pitch versus salesperson, balancing offline and online marketing. And I know for myself, I think it's a lot easier to market online because you have that screen, you know, you can just say what you got to say and you don't really have to worry about seeing how the other person's reacting. So I think it's easier to talk to people online than offline. However, I've been getting better myself at talking to people off offline about what I'm doing and the entrepreneur power hour, pay me what I'm worth and things like that. So I think it just takes a different strategy for each, but also integrating them and using the skills you've learned offline and online and that kind of stuff. Would you guys agree with that, Kareem? I think so, but eventually I have to step away from the screen like you're saying and actually go and talk to somebody and talk to people and see what's going on with them and see how I can help them. And it's also a little bit more powerful offline because they know you're a real person. It's not just an email conversation. Right. I've done, sure. I've done both. Um, for me, I've done the online. I've done been parts of webinars and trainings and stuff. And I've also done some of the real life and I'm not as good in the real life in person. I don't like that area because you get that really one-on-one -on -one action reaction and how they're thinking and the looks on their faces and their body language definitely says a lot to how they're reacting to what you say. And I tend to read a lot more into it. <laughs> so <then> I, <laughs> I take yeah. it a lot more personally. So when I'm online and doing stuff online, I don't get as attached to it. And, but that's part of what I need to get better at is when I'm out and about not being attached to yes. that. It's not me that they're rejecting. It's the idea or whatever, and it may not be the right time, right moment for them. Yep. And I'm, I'm sure Frank can attest to that big time, you know, the difference on that. Yeah. Yeah, I do find that a one-on-one -on -one meeting with, with somebody or a group meeting where you have maybe two or three people mm -hmm. that you can read people's body language easier than you can uh, online. Uh, I think... Uh, being online, you can't, uh, personally, I have trouble reading the body language online, but um, I, I think if you're somebody like uh, uh, oh, maybe uh, a personal speaker like Kareem, they read body language. They interpret uh, how to bring another person into the conversation. Uh -huh. Or if you're one-on-one, -on -one, then if you're uh, if you're trying to do it online and and pull people into the conversation um it's it's difficult for me to pull people into an online conversation more so than it would be if i'm personally uh in a group conference so you're saying that when you're belly to belly with somebody it's easier for you to feel comfortable talking about you, what you're passionate about, no, what, what you're doing. It's easier for me to bring somebody else in to where they feel comfortable talking right. about themselves. Right, right. That must be the energy you give off, Francis. You must give a very comforting energy to around people so they can, they can feel open with you. And... I think it's important that you we, we learn those skills and integrate them both into what we're doing now because this is an online conference and we all know each other very well. We're all very comfortable with one another. We all understand each other. 
And as to integrate that both online and offline, I think is the key. Because if you have the ability to go up to somebody that you know and say, hey man, yeah, we do the, I do the Entrepreneur Power Hour every Tuesday night. Would you like to join us? I think that it's, it's, you could learn a lot from us. And also we could learn a lot from you. Now I wouldn't approach somebody who wasn't entrepreneurial with this. You know, I wouldn't tell somebody about this that wasn't entrepreneurial because they're likely to be more closed off to it given the fact that they, they probably have a regular job or maybe they just don't want to do the work that's involved. And that's but, fine, you know. But what if you know somebody that where something like this can really help them or be a value to them? Have you ever talked I'm gonna, to you know, I'm going to kind of use a Leon as my NASA test monkey tonight. <laughs> Oh boy. And, uh, okay, Leon. Um, Just hold on, guys. I got to use the washroom. Okay. Right Enjoy my name. You'll get a good seat. <laughs> Friends always with the one liners. <laughs> okay, Leon. I'm going to use you as my NASA test monkey tonight. And, okay. Uh, you're in the public eye day in and day out with your with your uh, job and do you find that if John Q public walks through your door do you find it easier to learn the charm on uh, one on one with somebody that walks through the door or would you rather pick up a telephone and somebody calls you um me personally what i do is i you know definitely look at body language and when i'm um about to talk to someone what i do is kind of like you know i would like seek for opportunities to talk to them but really you know you need to um understand you know you need to be more interested in people than yourself I agree. I agree. And if somebody calls you on the phone and they say, Mr. Alexander, you have a call on line too, wouldn't you rather, how would you break the ice on the phone as opposed to somebody work walking through your door and they say, Oh, Mr. Alexander, we spoke yesterday on the phone, and I took the opportunity to come down and see you in person. Uh, you must talk to 10, 12, 14 people a day. Right. But, uh, how are you going to say to this person, um, could you refresh my memory as to what the topic was we were talking about so I can I can recall some things at, that maybe I could discuss with you uh, moving forward. How can I help you? Right. I mean, you know, someone, um, like, anytime, like, if someone's calling me, are you talking about they're calling me and I'm the person, like, trying to sell them a service or uh well john jones or mary hubbard rings your phone and uh they ask you about the the offers uh what you could offer Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, you just start with what their interests are. You know, don't don't be trying to sell them on um, what they're not interested at that time. Um, I know some marketers, when, I, when I'm talking to them, they talk about the idea of selling um, products to people that they have passion. So selling passion products. So if someone's calling you about a specific product, well, don't, don't don't be like ignoring them and talking about something else. Okay, and as opposed to somebody walking in your door, 
uh, they walk into your office and they say, Mr. Alexander, uh, I believe uh, we spoke yesterday. I'm, I'm Francis Richards and we spoke yesterday. I, I know you're very busy, but could you give me a moment of your time? Uh, yeah, well. You, you must talk to 15, 20 people a day, and how do you get them to tell you what it was that you spoke about yesterday to jog your memory? Oh, okay. Just, I, I think what I would do is I would just, again, start with, um, you know, listening to what they're saying and, you know, I think, you know, one thing is, you know, as far as like, um, which I don't really do this, but it's uh, one thing that I was taught was well, when what do you, do? you, well, you want to take, you know, I just, if you're talking to someone that's important, you know, you definitely want to be like taking like notes. So if I'm talking to 10, you know, 20 people a day, and if, you know, it's going to be important, you know, for you to know what to talk to them about when they talk to you again. So dropping down brief notes, that way you don't run into that confrontation um, silence. Yeah, that uncomfortable silence. You need some, I call it my cheat sheet. You, you got to have your cheat sheet and... Um, if it's uh, Jim, Jim Ron, you're speaking with, uh, or you're talking to Chris or Kareem, what is it that is going to be in your notes that's going to transition you to a point that you're able to, to carry on and intelligent conversation and draw this person into the conversation to to tell you what it is they want to discuss. Fran? Yes. See, the interesting thing with that is I know a lot of like these marketers, like these big time dudes, they got the business suit on and generally what they've done, and I've seen this, they have a script and one day I was telling them like, oh man, I, I don't think we should cold call like this we should wing it. He's like, no, stick to the script. Like it wasn't even like, Hey, maybe, you know, we could chat. And the biggest thing they told me is sound like you're really into it. And it, it comes from like doing this. It comes from being generally interested. Like if I was calling for an MLM that I wasn't interested in or products, it just wouldn't work. But if you generally have that confidence or like, Oh, this dude knows his stuff, even if you don't and you follow that script, Generally, you can get through and you can generally make that sale or convince that person that you're the man and you know what you're talking about. And obviously, I'm not saying do that. I am saying be genuine, but you need that general confidence in you or people are just going to be like, I'm done. Well, I, I've also heard that, you know, a lot of times it's like, like when you're talking in person with people, you know, you, you smile or you look or you make contact or something. So I've heard that over like the phone or something, um, or it, especially if you're doing it over the phone, um, but smile as you're talking too, you know, or walk around right. as you're talking to get, mm -hmm. you know, some energy flowing through you. So that way you, you sound upbeat and stuff. I've heard of those types of things. Exactly. Then, when I'm hey, talking guy. on the phone, Excuse I me. will actually look in a mirror, smile at myself, and build a rapport with myself. What's up, Leon? I know you're trying to say something. I'm going to have to get going, guys. I have a meeting. Well, I'm so sad without you. You know, you know, yeah. you, no, I'm sad too, but I need to leave. Okay, internet hug. <laughs> All right. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Bye. Uh, bye, bye. Thank you for being my test monkey. Thank you. <laughs> but I also think, you know, that in, you know, for online stuff too, um, even though you're not necessarily, like here we all can see each other, we can kind of see how each other's um, 
kind of reacting and stuff like that. So, you know, in that, you can kind of internalize that a little too and kind of get some play off of there. It's still not the same as being totally live right in front of somebody or in a, front of a group of people. I've done meetings where I've, you know, been up and standing in front of people and speaking and stuff like that. And I still have to work through that. That's one area I don't like. Um, I, and I still get a little – but on here, I have no problems because it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know you guys are. Yes, we are cute. We'll get you there, though. We'll get but, you doing push-ups and sit-ups, and we'll get you up <laughs> on that stage and be like, my name is Dan Sissick, and you will live a simply simple life. And I know that Tony Robbins guy is pretty powerful, but I got more heart, and I'm coming with you. All right, you see that beach over there? And that's really what I've seen the, these people when you're going mm -hmm. offline or online. The one big thing I've seen is if you bring that energy on camera and you bring it off camera, because it, it would be weird if I was like all like this and then you met me and you're like, hey, Kareem, hey. And then Mike, do you like cryptocurrency? Well, it was okay, I guess. <laughs> or, or vice versa if I was hiding on the screen. And it's just bringing that energy. See, I see people are attracted to that. When I was posting positive quotes, when I post things, people get attracted to that and they like it. And then my dad said, like, oh, your neighbor's following it. And I said, I don't I don't even talk to them. Why is he following? You? Oh, he likes what you post. So it's just that energy out there. Micah, what up? We're talking about offline versus online marketing. A lot of background noise coming from somewhere. That's not me. I have nothing on. No, that's coming from Micah's speaker. Something. Background aliens in the background. Yep. It's me. Like seriously. Like I wanted to talk. That's too bad. No, no you can right. talk now. It's better. But there was a lot of noise coming through there. I don't even have a fan. Hey, I Micah. Know. I want to believe it was extraterrestrials. <laughs> That's a great uh, awesome. Yeah, it was probably like Neil Armstrong or something there. <laughs> I personally know a couple of marketers that, and some of the things I've been involved with. Oh. And they, when I see them speak, they're, um, one, he gets excited, and I've seen him excited, but he's not that over-the-top excited. Um, he does not like being up in front of the crowds. I know it. I just know it because of the way he is up there. But I've seen his success, and I know that he has pushed himself out there to do it so that others can see that you can get out there and do it. But another one I follow, um, he's, you know, he's energy. I mean, when he gets up there and gets out there, he's got the energy. Or when I followed him on his uh, Think and Grow Rich call, I, you know, you hear it in his voice. You see it. You, you just feel it. And I think that's like what you were saying, Kareem, that, you know, people are attracted to that energy, that high energy, that vibration being higher, which lifts them up. And that's, I think, how when we're talking to people, marketing online or offline, if you can get that feeling across, that's when they'll more likely engage with you. Yeah, you wouldn't watch this video if I was like, all right, guys, let's market online and offline. How are we going to do it? You know, I don't know. Or if I come up and I'm like, all right, I'll show you how to market online and offline. I got the motions. I'm picking up my keyboard, I'm shaking it. I'm taking this and I'm throwing this across the room. Maybe I have my bird on and I'm doing crazy stuff. And people are like, you got to check this dude out. He's funny on YouTube. Oh, it's not another cat video? No, it's not a cat video, I swear. And then they watch it and they're like, oh, he's actually saying something intelligent. Wait. You can say intelligent things and be funny. Sorcery. And then that's why aliens are tuning in through Micah. I know. That's what I keep hearing. <laughs> They're watching. He's picking up something over there. I don't know. <laughs> Fox Mulder. We got Fox Mulder over here. <laughs> also, uh, Bill Maybauer, he made it. Bill, congrats on getting through the doctor's appointment, and it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bill. What's up, buddy? Bill's a trooper. Yep. To today, we're talking about offline versus online marketing. How do you market yourself on this thingy we call a PC and then go out there and tell people about what you're doing in your hometown? and then rock both worlds.
Well, well what I do is I uh, have availability through my business is a lot of videos. And so I market that way. Uh, so I don't have really, yeah, I don't necessarily have to get online to see them face to face, but I got a, got a lot of videos and, you know, stuff that the companies put together so that I can send those out and, and they'll market for me. Uh, yeah, they have a number of different programs. So it just keeps, as they say, dripping on uh, people as they, uh, and after a while I say, oh yeah, maybe I'll have to do that. So that's the easiest way I know of right now uh, is to, and, and it doesn't, it's a no brainer for me. I just set it up once and it's on its way. I so got that's how I do that. Okay. I've got a question for you. You're using a lot of videos from those people and stuff that, uh, that you're using to market to them. But how do they know that, see, how do they get to where they know who you are and that you're the person that they want to deal with? Well, uh, you know, I talked to them initially and then every time I, uh, the video goes out and they have my name and information there if they want to get back to me or have any questions. Uh, and it's always good to then, and I have, when they watch a video, I am notified that they have watched it and I can uh, then call them or get back to them anytime. So some I just let uh, sit and, and watch them for a while. Others I may get back to them after they've watched one or two. And the way the program is set up, the first couple of days they get a number of videos and then it, it spreads it out through time. So uh, at least that's what I'm doing. So, and then when you're doing that, then you're kind of prefacing them so that they understand that you're sending the videos out and it involves other people in the videos, but you're the contact person and you're the one that's is okay. So, so you're at least developing that rapport and that initial setup so they understand, so they don't get on there and say, Oh, this is the person I want to follow. And no, no, it's, it's not that way. No. <laughs> But that's happened. I've seen that happen before where, you know, you get, you know, send stuff out or something and they're so enamored of that person or, you know, so taken with that person, they go look them up and go find them and follow them rather than you. Yeah, but that's more of a, but these are company generic videos, if you want to call it that. Okay. Well, Bill, I have a question then. Let's say you're talking on the phone to me about you, what you do or somebody sees your video online and knows you in real life. And they're like, Bill, dude, I didn't know you were a businessman. That's awesome. You do something on the side and then they, they start interacting with you. And I, I, you know, your neighbor comes to your door and they're all excited. They're like, yeah, dude, Bill has a business. How would you handle it? Like any differently then would you like send them down or, cause there's gotta be some different things. Cause when people ask me about what I do, offline i can definitely show them a little bit more and get them acquainted throw a book at them they duck and then i throw it at them again <laughs> or maybe like my friends will make jokes about the power hour they're like oh dude i didn't know you do and then they'll like good jokes though and then they'll go like my page and they'll like share my stuff so it's kind of interesting what a little bit of people coming to your door and seeing like oh i know the guy behind the camera so do you interact any Sure. Uh, there's also local meetings that I can take them to if they so desire. I also have videos on my cell phone that if I wanted to show them right then and there, or I have documents, a few documents on my phone that I could show them right then and there. Or, you know, if they come to my door, I can uh, provide them with uh, documents that I have stored at the house. Or when I go out, a lot of times I have a suitcase that has a number of things that I can provide for them. So I can meet, meet, uh, talk to them right there out in the field, or I can talk to them here at the house or take them to a meeting or show them some videos. That's sweet. Bill's going to be like, check out my business card. Boing. They're like, Whoa, where'd that yeah. come from? He's like, and here's a bunch of docs. Whoa, Bill, where'd you get all that from? Just like a marketing ninja. Just that's right. I've got like, it all ready for them. Meeting. You're like, no, whoa. <laughs> so basically, you're, you're kind of adept at doing either the in-person or online then because you kind of sure. got that built up 
around you. Now, which which have you found is easier for you to do over time and stuff, or have you, because of being involved doing this for a while, that you have gotten better at one or the other, or maybe both uh, equally? Well, I I feel more comfortable being able to uh, talk to go out to a meeting, a tag meeting or some type of meeting. Uh, let them know, you know, do a little can of my card and then let them know that I'm going to send them some videos and they're okay with that. And they've got to opt in and then they start getting these videos. So, you know, that's the easiest way I know and uh, just keep filling my funnel uh, through time besides just talking to people and see, see if they're interested. All I've got, all I'm doing is getting information in front of them and then they can and decide whether they like it or not. That's my job. So, and however I get that taken care of, that's what I do. Get the info from Bill. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're making an awesome video. We're putting some funny stuff, some information, and we send it out to people, and then they realize they can laugh at something other than cat videos, and they can learn about the entrepreneurial world, and they're like, wow, I didn't know I could be an entrepreneur. If I'd seen this in high school, when I was like military college, military college, like, ah, uh, they're like, there is another way. Like, what's that, Billy Mays? You can be an entrepreneur. Isn't that risky? <laughs> Isn't working a nine to five for the rest of your life risky too? Isn't that more of a risk? <laughs> and that's the whole thing of what powerful marketing can do to change somebody. You bring the information, but you're confident, you throw it out there, and then you make a huge difference in the world. So I'd say even more than the information, it's that power of what the information can do and how it can change somebody's life. Like Micah's cryptocurrency, because that actually My? showed me a way that I could actually create wealth. Not just an income, but actual like wealth, which I won't go like too much into like, you know, different types of that. But I think it's really cool that online now there's things called exchanges and people can learn what they're doing with, you know, different coins and they can make some money or lose it. But it's all the fun in doing it that you can attract different people and then work with different people to do that. Dan has a thought. He's thinking. What you thinking, Dan? Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Fran. No, I say I smelled the smoke. Oh, that's because we're on fire right now with ideas. We are, Kareem, and I tell you, there's nothing better than a, a group that's on the same wavelength. Same wavelength. If you if you want to carry everybody with you and bring new people on board, the more the merrier. I have no problem talking about cryptocurrency, talking about uh, the mindset of other people, and and just how to transition somebody from uh, the current topic of tonight or whatever anybody else wants to talk about. Well, that's how you market. You, you hit every avenue. You hit people who are doing this or like, I didn't know they were into online marketing and then this and then they also did that and they scuba dive and they wrestle with bears. And then you're like, whoa, this, this dude's pretty cool and these people are pretty cool and that's exciting. And, they, and Francis needs to check her smoke detector. <laughs> like, oh, I smell smoke. Wait, whoa. Oh, hey guys, I'll be right back. Like, yeah. Oh, uh, well, I'm gonna quit smoking one of these days. I'll oh, just go get a vapor. Day. Just go get a vapor stick, and then you'll be done in no time. My dad. Uh, I would my dad, love to get a vapor stick. We'll market it to you. We'll we'll, we'll get you one. We'll get you one. Um, that'll be so much better than getting you. Uh, you mean know, hundred or two hundred bucks, and then you just yeah. Go and buy. Go and buy a vapor stick. It, you'll love it. It's way better 
then well, first of all, tobacco doesn't really have much flavor, okay? You add some cherries to it, you add some grape to it, you add some things oh. to it, though, and it actually starts to get a little bit more, like, enjoyable, if that makes sense, right? I guess marketing yeah, tobacco. Oh, yeah, so, and, it and, you know, I got, uh, when I was in the hospital last week, uh, with a mini stroke, now, what could be more, uh, what could be more insightful than to go into hospital, have a mini stroke, and come home that night and say, why do I want to smoke? Do I really? No, I don't. But I'm too chicken to quit. Yeah, well, that's the more likely, more likelihood that I'm just too chicken to quit because I don't want to gain weight. And, uh, I actually got hypnotized and quit cold turkey for a year and a half. Fran, look at the screen. You ready? You will quit smoking. <laughs> See, this is another way of marketing, guys. If they keep saying no, get a string and hit. You no. will quit smoking. The next time you smoke, you will have bad... Uh, taste in your mouth, and you'll be Which, like, "Oh, that's awful taste." I can't. Leads, that's <laughs> <laughs> that leads me into a crazy marketing thing, though, Fran, because I actually now I haven't done this personally, but I have read about this, and I knew some people. And I, and, I, and in my person, this could be good or bad. In my opinion, this could be good or bad. And there is some NLP techniques of neuro linguistic programming of saying th things a certain way and with a certain tone that you can actually modify behavior and that can translate into making a sale or not making a sale funny enough or quit smoking right. or not quitting smoking. So that's another Avenue you can also take is to look up don't, and don't become like weird with it. Like, Oh, I'll learn NLP and hypnotize everybody. I'm a wizard. Cause then I'll be like, we're not hanging out anymore. But, there actually is a good side to neuralist neuralist see no i can't neuralistic uh, neurolinguistic yes neurolinguistic yeah but with that part of that what you're doing is i think in that and what some of what i've heard about that uh, uh one of the companies i was a part or am a part of uh the owner or the founder or whatever did a lot of that he would do a lot of things in that but the way he did it totally with me it was the opposite it just totally turned me off it was like you're doing that again okay it's it just irritated the crap out of me. but for a lot of people the way he would do it and go about it it worked because it would touch something and that would make them decide they wanted to buy whatever you know was being put out there and i've seen and heard that you know you can kind of the way you say it and do it it can touch on points that kind of trigger things with them I think it's a hit or miss with that stuff. It could probably either get people really interested or people will be like, eh, you know, stop the NLP stuff, dude. You know, just talk regular English, bro. So it could work on the marketing side for the better or it could make you think people are weird. It's, I think it's a hit or miss. It's something to look into. It's something I've done some research on, but it's not something I like go out and necessarily like practice or preach. Well, I actually talked with a couple of my nurses when I was in the hospital about cryptocurrency and they had no idea there was any such animal. <laughs> and I actually have a follow up with one girl tomorrow and um, it's, it's just one of those things, it's like a, a game, a goal that I set for myself that I want to get at least two people a week to follow up with my cryptocurrency. And I feel very comfortable with it, discussing it online, offline. And uh, one of my nurses asked me. Uh, Just got a call came in, guys. I got to step up. Okay. Kareem, I'll uh, give you a shout back uh, tomorrow. Are you you working tomorrow? Yes. Okay. What, can you give me a shout after work? Yes, I'll give you a shout. I'll send you some, and you can clean your house with it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. 
Excellent. Advertising <laughs> things today, eh? But yeah. Like, like this, this, is, this uh, call is not sponsored by Shout. <laughs> this call. Is- no, it's not sponsored by Shout. <laughs> or Vapes. Right, bye for now. Well, can or I tobacco. can I talk with you too, Micah, tomorrow with Kareem? Oh, did he take off already? He yep. he bolted. Okay, I'd like to get in on that discussion, Kareem. If you guys are talking about anything in particular, I don't. I don't know what it is, but anyway, uh, Fran, I, I like how you're saying you set actual goals, like two people a week. Is this something we haven't touched on? Like sometimes I sit down and say, "Where do I want to be in so many years?" Or how much do I want to get? How am I going to get there? Yeah, how am I going to get there? And you actually have a plan, and you're real. Like, it's not like I'm talking to you online. You're like, eh, cryptocurrency, but offline, you're doing something weird. Because so many of these marketers, you see them in, like, big houses and cars, and then you find out they rented it or something weird. And I want to know who's the person behind the camera, and that person behind the camera better be the same person I shake hands with one day. Exactly. I, I want to be as transparent, as real, as accessible to anybody that I'm talking to, whether it's online, on the phone, uh, somebody that you meet in the grocery store. Uh, I, I want to be the same person and somebody that's going to be accessible, that uh, you can bring your grandmother to to dinner and say, this is the crazy old lady I told you about (laughs) in the wheelchair. (laughs) You know, this is, this who I am. Hey, all Mama Fran, live in the house. (laughs) Yeah, Mama Fran's in the house. (laughs) She's the one that talks funny and (laughs) makes her wants and wishes known. And if you say someone in me, she'll correct it to. Uh, yeah, so I will. I will. It's it's just who I am, folks. That's all right. We love you. Keep coming back. Yep. And uh, the the nurse asked me, "What do you do?" And I said, "Well, I have an online business, actually, two or three of them, and." Um, I said, it's just what I enjoy doing. It's not a job to me. It's something I enjoy doing because I can help you or I can help somebody else uh, make $800 a, a month extra than you're making now. And you can pick your hours of doing it. It doesn't matter if you're working swing shifts at the hospital. If I told you that you could make an extra 500 to $800 a month, would it be something that would get your attention? And so they said, really? I said, yeah. I said, it's doable. It's not a pie high in the sky kind of dream that's inaccessible it's tangible it's accessible and um i said would that interest you more Mm -hmm. than if i told you i was a chess monkey for nasa i don't know those nasa test monkeys are pretty cool though (laughs) 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 and i want to go on a rocket ship although i've seen what nasa does and so yes what you're doing would definitely interest me more because you're coming off genuine you're not yeah. like hi i'm fran and you can make a hundred million dollars in two months no just by clicking a mouse <laughs> yeah. Click, yeah no experience yeah, that's that's really not singing like it's anything tangible or no. you're not telling anybody anything you're not telling them how you how to do it you're not telling them uh it's kind of like Donald Trump saying that I can do it all myself. I build a wall. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's yeah. If you make claims that but are, but if you field. just if you have the same mentality, God, strike me now. 
Yeah. <laughs> You know, if if I said you got to have the same mentality as Donald Trump to jump out there and and take the the nerve to say the things that he says. Hold on, I'm doing my comb over. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get the like the face. Yeah. Make make on maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll have a session. Make entrepreneurial activities great again. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just have my tie and I'll be angry and I'll do this and you got to have your Trump scowl. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think he'll do good for America. Now I don't know Jack about American politics, so I mean I, I don't know. Get yourself lucky from the get go. <laughs> yeah. All right, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Not to get on D T because <laughs> Not too big on politics, you know, because someone will like. I'm not either. I'm just saying I don't know anything about it. I mean, I I don't know if he's a better option or not. I got well, no neither idea. does Trump. So no, see, I don't think. <laughs> see how much you got in common to start with? Yeah, yeah. exactly. See, you can market it too. You could be like, <laughs> make America great again. And actually, thinking of that. Because looking at elections, and I'm not big on really either or, or, but I see they have, like, cool slogans. And I see, like, we were talking about this last time a little bit. If people have some kind of a semblance with, like, maybe you throw a slogan out there or an idea or you have a really clear vision, that does help tremendously when you're going to market like uniting the world's entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or my other company for public speaking speak your mind now the world is your audience people are like whoa that's a cool tagline let's hang out or can i see what you're doing but that that is well you hit it on the nail though that's exactly they are marketing themselves to the american people Mm -hmm. You know, point blank. And each one has picked the road that they've chosen to market to. And so now they're targeting their, their stuff at the market that they're trying to reach. That's part of what, you know, finding that balance for our online offline marketing too, is we got to find that balance of what works for us in our own business. That's why I was asking Bill a little bit about, you know, what he likes better, what he's better at. But like for me, I like the online side of it, but yet I lose some of the more, for lack of a better word, the human aspect of it mm -hmm. because it, it, it doesn't have that same interplay as in front of somebody and where you can really kind of get that connection that way. Um, but yet we still need to learn to be viable in both ways because it is a very digital world anymore. And so many people do things online too. You can't necessarily just look at it and throw it out the window and say, Oh, that's not for me. You know, we've got to, and same like for me, I can't just throw the, as I call it, old school, the direct network marketing to people and face to face and stuff. I can't necessarily throw that out either because then you're missing out on part of your target you know, because there are going to be people, be people on your target that are going to be one way or the other or a little of both. So you got to learn how to, you know, finagle both too. And that's part of the where we're at, you know, in the world and in the, this network marketing, direct marketing and stuff that we do that, you know, even I don't do as good as I could probably on the direct you know the interacting personally um as i should and hey i'll bring your sign to a convention because actually one like big thing i was talking to people i'm like i really want to get my youtube channel just going crazy and some of the things we're collaborating with people online hitting them up and, and doing videos with them and because a lot of people like seo 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 but seo only takes you so far i can master keywords and people are like you know it's not really for me but if you collaborate with some of the bigger people, that's powerful. And then another thing people are saying is get some meetup groups. Go to like meetup where you can get, get in them big conferences and hit people up and be like, yeah, power hour and pay me what or whatever it is. Or and even say simply simple life. And then another big one, since you're doing videos, Dan, Fran, and uh, I know Bill has videos. Maybe you do some of your own. There's this thing called VidCon, which I missed, which – 
But what VidCon is, is big YouTubers get there. And you think if you were there for a couple of days, just hitting people, be like, yeah, I'm Kareem, small channel, big dreams. And then you see a tear in one of their eyes because they were at that point you were trying to start. And then you go to VidCon, maybe you're making a few new friends, you start working with them, and all of a sudden their people and your people are hitting up and you're like, whoa. But that, that's something I was also leading into is because if you're working on your business and your, what, however you're going about it, you got to also, like Fran says, you got to be kind of transparent and able to show them that, yes, it's hard work. Yes, you're going to do things that you don't like to do, but that's part of business. Just like in my job, there are certain aspects of my job, wherever I'm working at, I don't like doing I do it because I know I'm going to get that paycheck and going back to what we were talking about earlier that people don't necessarily realize that, yeah, we're in, you know, that is a pyramid scheme. You know, you have the CEO and all that there, <laughs> but at the same point, they get so comfortable in that and they do, they deal with the bad that goes on what they perceive as the good, you know, in getting that paycheck and the parts of the job that they like. So here, when we're dealing with them and being transparent, helping them to understand that, you know, in order to reach those dreams, you got to be able to do the work behind it. And some of the work is down and dirty and you got to do it and you got to learn how to work around it. And as I'm learning, as I'm growing, as I'm going through a lot of things over the last few years that I, I've had to learn to do some things that I did never, I never thought I would ever do or never thought I'd see myself doing, but I did it because it's pushing me closer. Yeah, YouTube channel, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I don't know about it. There's people who are scared to be on camera, you know, it's funny to me. But there are legitimately still a lot of people out there like, oh, God, a camera. I can't talk or I don't want to put myself on the Internet. I'll get criticized. People make fun of me. I'm like, they'll, they'll do it regardless. I, I mean, it's really just the fact that if you get out of that, that's why it transitions well with the comfort zone. If you jump out of the comfort zone, and you really start to say like, okay, I'm going to have to do some awkward things in marketing and maybe I'm going to have to be a little salesy, but I don't like that. Eh. And then you go out there and you're, you just present yourself. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. And then people go, whoa, he's honest. You know, maybe some people like you, maybe some people don't. And going back to that election, there, there's people who like this side and there's people who like that side, but they're not really changing one thing I can say is their personalities are consistent. Maybe their views aren't, but their personalities are consistent. So people are like, man, I like how he has that slogan and he does this. Or I like how she talks or she's such a good speaker. And then it comes down to you identify with that person. You can see that they're a real they're actually like real. They're not just somebody over a screen. And then that makes a huge connection. And, and one thing that I want to bring up that I've heard and wanted to interject, it's uh, remember 55, 38, and 7. Does anybody I know what those numbers mean? Are those the winning numbers to the lottery? I wish. <laughs> but when you when you're commute, and this is, and we're all talking about communication. And uh, 55, let's see, basically uh, – 93% of all our communication is nonverbal. That's true. People are only listening to, if you just communicate via email and text, they're missing 93% of what you're trying to communicate or vibes that they're getting. So what is it? 55% uh, is visual. 38% uh, is how you say it. And only 7% is the words you use. And so that's what people are listening to. So, you need to be, if, when you're communicating, you got to remember all of that stuff. And that's been, those percentages have been proven over and over and over again. So those are real, whether it's in this country or even in uh, other countries, it's all been uh, realized. So when we're trying to communicate, you got to keep those things in mind. Oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be the nonverbal anyone can pick on because if I don't know your language, Bill, and you're speaking Chinese or Japanese, but I'm trying to motivate you and I'm sitting here like in the chair like this and you can barely see me or I just don't seem engaged or I'm, I'm looking off in the distance constantly, body language can tell you sometimes a lot more and even 
going back to that NLP and some of that stuff. And I know some coaches and some life coaches, dating coaches, they'll even say it's all about like the nonverbal before you even go to the verbal. And that's how people will either approach you or not. I've never heard that breakdown on the 55, 38, and 7. I probably might have heard it maybe in a different way. But the way you said that, wow, just that was powerful on that. I wrote it. I actually wrote it down because I'm going to put that in my notes and stuff because uh, that brings something up I need to be more aware of when I'm out there and putting myself out there and to just remember those things, put them in my head to remember that. I got to remember that half of what they're picking up on is all the nonverbal I'm throwing out there, even though I might be saying one thing, but my body might be saying something different. <laughs> Yep. And uh, who is it? Uh, who's the marketer that we all know, the engineer? Uh, Delohi's uh, guy. Michael Delohi's mentor. Oh, Anyhow, Big Al Schreider. Big Al, yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember his name. But, you know, people in – how many times has he said that people have already decided whether they're going to buy from you or not in 30 seconds, and you haven't said anything? Yeah, exactly. That's pretty well nonverbal right there. So. Yep. Uh, it's it's really important, I, and so video and communicating and being with people is is uh, really important. So you can't rely just on on text information. Yeah, and I want to welcome Michael Trout. He's starting an awesome thing. Oh, hey, Trout. Michael! And he's welcome to the Power Hour. We're talking about online and offline marketing, how to rock those two worlds, and we're just having fun. And Bill gave us some winning lottery numbers, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to go out and make a lottery ticket now with that kind of information, Bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just talking okay. about how to integrate uh, online and offline marketing, and me and Karima are really good at that. We, I've got no problem talking to people about what we're doing and stuff like that. I think, however, I'm very selective because I want to make sure that I'm not wasting my time talking to the wrong people about the Entrepreneur Power Hour or content marketing in general. Uh, because I used to be an MLM and network and uh, health and wellness stuff and it. I never got anywhere with it. And then, well, you know our story, Michael. We told you. Didn't we? Did we tell you? Yeah. I think in it briefly, yeah. but <laughs> your story is more important here, sir. Yeah. Anyway, I'm glad it took me forever to get on this chat. They kept saying, you haven't entered any numbers like five times. Uh, anyway, hi from Japan. <laughs> my name is Mike Trout. I'm Killer Hornet. Maybe you've seen my Animal Planet show, Hunting Killer Hornets from Hell. That's me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> is that the name of your show? Did you say Hornets? I've got a lot of yellow jackets yeah. you can come and take. No, no, these, are, these things are huge. Let me see if I've got one right here. Oh, oh I, I know what he's talking oh, about. What? Come buy some bees from the Power Hour. Uh, yeah, I will go the other way. I do not like bees <laughs> at all. Not at well, all. The bees, the bees actually yeah, aren't hostile. Probably. It's hornet, hornets yeah. and wasps are more hostile than, than bees are. Bees are actually quite mellow unless you disturb the nest, and that's when they sting you. But I don't know what kind of bee it was. It stung me on my arm right here. I don't like that. I was about eight or nine years old, and I don't like them. I go the other way. <sighs> Like them. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Fran. I'm back. My Fran. computer got zapped. Okay. And Michael, we're, we're, having a, a, we're having a bad thunderstorm here, so I call okay. back in. All right. We can barely hear you, Michael. I don't know what's wrong with your microphone. I, was hearing I don't know. Do you have a I headset? Can, uh, you know, I can't find my fucking headset. Excuse me. Um... <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, speaking into my iPad, you guys are coming out clear. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We can hear you a little. We can hear you to a degree, just not as well as we, I'd, we'd like to hear you. I, that's what I'm thinking. That's fine. Hey guys, I'm going to have to get going. Uh, I'll talk to you later. I'll get back with you, Kareem, and uh, have a great day, guys. Okay, bye bye, Bill. Bye, thanks for being here. Bye, thanks. Later, Bill. Thanks for the lotto ticket. All righty. So, yeah, no, but just going back to, you know, I'm not trying to sell anybody bees, but going back to, like, that idea of I was throwing out there that, 
you go up to someone and you create that rapport and you have fun with it. And then it'll actually in turn, whatever you're doing, they'll want to be a part of it. They're like, wow, this crazy guy is willing to throw himself on camera. And he has all these other friends who are doing it. This looks like fun. And I'm going to be part of it. Yeah. Dan, did we scare you? (laughs) Dan's like, Oh boy. Bees. Fine. I'm cool. It's just, I just, I don't like bees. I, you know, I know what we need them. They're good for. Yeah, we do need them. Absolutely. We need them. We we can't have them killed off or anything. Well, bees, bees are like cows. Bees are, um, uh, are, um, are, um, sorry, herbivores where, uh, hornets and wasps are carnivores. That's the big difference. They're different Ah. species. Well, yeah. uh, Carnivores and herbivores. Bees are only interested in plants they're not interested in you or anything else hornets basically eat the bees. see they would uh, make good marketers or, oh. <laughs> they're focused yeah. what they're, no they're very holo- yeah they're holo- uh, holocracy they're the, they're the inventors of holocracy by the way they're the uh. first <laughs> the organization was invented actually not by bees because bees evolved from ants so um Ants, I guess, are the first. Oh, well, actually, wasps wasps evolved from ants. Yeah, so, and so did bees. Yeah, you're right. That's true. Yeah. Is there a bee pal in the office? <laughs> I would like to patent this design, sir. I I don't want the beetles or the spiders stealing my inventions. You can count on me. <laughs> that's funny can't so, hear you anyway um, okay let me go find my headset I'll be back alrighty <laughs> you send him on a wild goose chase that's alright yeah. hey, it'll help him out when he has conferences with other people so he can get his ideas across. They're like, oh, Mike, I heard you had a great idea. Yeah, what is it? What? 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 Yeah, I can't what? It's like, I can oh, see. Kareem and Chris said I should have a headset. Woo! Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't buy everything <laughs> back to the subject. See, he found it. Woo! See, we helped him with Yay! marketing. <laughs> marketing. Hey, that, that looks good. He looks like an air traffic controller now. Hey, that's cool, man. He's going to keep them planes Houston, up in the Houston, sky. The, um, there's an <laughs> incoming flight. Yeah, actually, um, yes, it's called Sound Up. The bee, the bee, the so, bee has landed. The bee now, can, can, can everyone hear me okay now? Yes, much yes. better. You're all good. Not better, all right, good. Well, here's the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing. I do have this innate power. I do have an innate power, which is I can intuitively and I just got up and I, I just went directly to where they were and I found them. It's like, you know, they just talked to me. Um, I used to do that with chess. You know, I used to play chess and I'd always be able to pick white. Um, I always, I used to play chess for a chess club and, you know, elementary school and stuff like that. And I'd always, every time someone would go like this, I knew where white was. It was like that hand, that hand. So showing off my superpowers, just be odd. Yep. Awesome. Anyway, my name is Mike Trout. Uh, I live in Japan. I'm working on a decentralized project called SoundUps, and um, I'm headed to DevCon 2 in September, To and I'm working on um, a fringe uh, unconference that's going to happen at the same hotel, at, not at the same time as the conference. It's, it's, it's an unconference called uh, undevcon2.com. So the idea there is actually to voice things about the um, classic Ethereum, the split, kind of um, an alternative thoughts and feelings. A lot of folks are going to be going to this conference that don't necessarily love Ethereum and will not have a voice or a platform to express their concern. So what I'm doing is creating a place, and I think we could do radio with it and everything else, and we could make it a pretty big thing. 
Yeah, well, what, what I like about that is you, you're hitting different avenues. You're doing the radio, so you're passionate. You're getting your ideas on the airwaves. And you're going, you're creating YouTube videos, because I know you said you do that. And you're going to DevCon, so you're hitting it from all avenues. So people all around the world are watching it, listening. And they're like, oh, I saw Mike Trout at, you know, DevCon or, the, or this conference, and this is awesome. And that's the best way, really, to get any idea, in my opinion, out there. Yeah. Oops, I missed. I, I wrote that wrong. I wrote that wrong. So it's www. On dev. So I want. This is what I'd like to do. Is if you guys are up for it. I already have another another guy who does radio who wants to be, um, you know, one of the um, promoters of it, you know, of of this basically fringe DevCon two, the un DevCon two, the misfit DevCon two, uh, whatever, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys are following the Ethereum stuff going on right now. I'm sure, I'm sure some of you are, right? I am, but uh, we can talk about okay, it after the call. So, like, because we're okay. just keeping it so general the... now, but I'll hit you. All right, okay. The idea is just so, general so, offline, so, online. So, all right, well, just to say this one thing there is a revolution going on right now in Ethereum. What the heck is that noise? Sounds what? Like a fan. It's my fan. It's like, sound like Darth Vader breathing. Oh my gosh, that was Darth. like, great. What do Darth. you think about So, Margaret? there's this huge, anything going on, so, it's very interesting stuff. That's cool, man. No, I have to have this fan on, it's too hot in my room, otherwise. Um, <laughs> oh, it's, I've got the fan off, and I'm sweating here, brother. I'm sweating, so yes, you can have the fan off. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to turn it off. <laughs> if it wasn't for my AC here, I'd be boiling. Yeah, I'll turn but mine on. I went to work in like this in a jacket, so I think I'll survive. How's that? Do you guys hear the buzz? Air, tra back. air traffic, taking off. No, it sounds off. good to me. I can hear a little bit of something. Oh, really? It's not that bad? I can leave it on? Uh, You're not getting any yes, of leave it on. I don't hear anything. Oh, okay. I, I can know. hear it. I can hear it's it falling on your microphone. That's funny. Oh, boy. The air yeah. traffic oh, controllers. Yeah, taking we off. hear that. I hear that. <laughs> All right. I got a super fan. Look at this fan that I have. I mean, I don't have like a. This is like an industrial fan. So this thing is the real, the real deal. Mike does not fool around when it comes to food. <laughs> Look out. Look out, world. We're bringing big fans back. So, yeah. So, any of you want to come to – if anyone out there wants to come to Japan and hunt killer hornets, I do have an eco-adventure. Um, oh, I know, you know what kind of hornets. Where you actually go. I know, what kind of hornets, I know what kind of hornets you're talking about. Yeah, they're, they're very nasty. Yeah. So um, – <laughs> And uh, I actually have another show coming out on Smithsonian and uh, Discovery Channel is called Killer Hornets. Okay. Um, and that's coming out, I don't know when, but it's been filmed and done. So, But that's just my hobby, you know? Hey, someone's got to have a hobby. Hey, honestly, my hey. hobby is making videos and having fun on there. And then hopefully I can make my hobby other people's hobby about them. Like you can have your videos where you're doing your – house you found up houses and catching the bees and then dan's living the simply simple life in like costa rica and jamaica and all the places the beach boys talk australia. about australia australia and he's sitting there uh, uh, he's on top of that one sh the queen sydney he's like hey guys hey and there's a he's like hey this is my new business partner a kangaroo and then people do fun things <laughs> on camera they live the life they wow. want that is a testament to the success of the power hour well, I, I cleaned chicken poop the other day and made a video on it. Okay. <laughs> I'll make sure not to watch that. I'm going to link it. I'm going to make sure you do watch it. Let me go find it. Link no, my, my chicken poop video. No, I'll see you later. Have a good one. It's been nice. What? You. you don't want to see my chicken poop video. Dude, it's so important. Do you, <sighs> any of you raise like, chickens? 
No. I no. Don't raise chickens. I don't even know what to No, but I hang out with a lot. No. I don't eat eggs either. Very, I very, very, uh, if you knew, well, that's good for you. I eat, we eat eggs a lot, so we eat eggs every day. That's <laughs> a part of our protein. So, I, you know, I just don't. I want to know what my chickens are, what's in the eggs, everything else. I want my eggs to be loving, to be happy, to be like, damn these. I love to lay eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and your right. eggs love you. That's, that could be a slogan for the past. <laughs> Yeah, I got, I got uh, Tommy. I got my two little. You want to see my? Uh, you know, hey, I have child labor. I'm, hey, I'm proud. Hey. Wow. Hey. Hello, UNICEF. Tommy. UNICEF. Hello. Child Hello, Tommy. UNICEF. Mikey, are you there? Oh, I'll call in. My, I put my, I put. And hey, I don't pay him a dime. You know, these guys have to work for their money. Here's one of them. That, that's Here's not Mikey. fair. See. Here's Yacht Mikey. Power hour Mikey. Is not Say hi. Say hello. Free. So, what's your job? What's your job? What do you do? Take care of the chickens? Yeah? Do you like taking care of the chickens? Do you like it? No? No, he doesn't. Should we eat them? Let's, let's go get the chickens. <laughs> hey, go get a chicken and let's go eat it right now. Let's go get a chicken. We'll eat it. On so camera. Eat the chicken. He'll be like, ah! On camera. He'll be like, yeah. He's gonna, like, Sanders. Like, you you want to bring a chicken in? Can we bring a chicken in? Should I go get a chicken and bring him in and <laughs> have him talk on to you guys? Oh, he could be on our message. panel. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> child <laughs> labor. <laughs> you don't have child labor. Come on. Hey, that's oh, fine. Yeah, yeah, labor. I got two of them. Every day they get up. I'm like, get your ass out there and work those chickens. <laughs> There'll be no breakfast. <laughs> Uh, uh, there'll be no what, uh, how many zen chickens do you have? Two hundred. <laughs> Joking, five. Can you imagine two hundred chickens? That would be nasty. Kareem, no, we, we let gotta, them out. They walk around. Kareem, we gotta we meet let them out. Other. We actually have to end the show now because we gotta meet with uh, another person who wants to be interviewed with us. So. Oh, great. Okay. I want to He's thank like, everybody like for trail. being here, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Take care.